from the heart of our nation's capital, here's Family Research Council President Tony Perkins. Good afternoon and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Washington Watch. I'm your host, Tony Perkins. So glad to have you with us. As we mentioned yesterday, we are broadcasting from the U.S. Department of State, where Secretary Mike Pompeo is hosting the second annual Ministerial to Advance Religious Freedom this week with uh, over a thousand representatives from 130 countries. All people from every place on the globe must be permitted to practice their faith openly in their homes, in their places of worship, in the public square, and believe what they want to believe. That was Secretary of State Mike Pompeo earlier this morning when he opened the event. And uh, we're going to be here covering the entire week with a comprehensive overview of this historic event, largest gathering at the State Department on a human rights event, and of course the largest gathering on religious freedom issues. In just a moment, I'll talk with Mark Green, the administrator for the U.S. Agency for International Development. Today, he discussed how religious freedom helps propel USAID's beneficiaries on the journey to self-reliance as they transform from beneficiaries to partners to donors. And, uh, and there's a key role that the faith community plays in that as well. So we're going to talk about that. In my second segment, I'll talk with uh, fellow Commissioner Christina Ariaga uh, from the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom about a recent example of the curtailing of religious freedom in Cuba. Actually, five pastors trying to get to the event from Cuba detained, not allowed to come. At the bottom of the hour, I'll talk with uh, Tristan Abajaz, the uh, Hungarian State Secretary for the Aid of the Persecuted Christians. We'll talk with him. And Travis Weber, Family Research Council's Vice President of Policy and the Director of the Center for Religious Freedom about the religious freedom challenges in China and kind of an overview of today's activities here at the State Department. The website, TonyPerkins.com. If you're on Twitter, it is uh, at T Perkins. And by the way, as always, if you miss anything on your way home, it's all archived right there at TonyPerkins.com. Uh, as I mentioned, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who is spearheading this second annual ministerial to advance religious freedom at the State Department, uh, has invited over... Uh, a, a thousand different leaders from both the governmental realm, the non-governmental organizations, civil society. So it's an eclectic gathering of those from different faiths. I mean, every faith group represented here, even those who uh, really have no faith are here. It's about freedom, the freedom of religion, freedom of, of belief. Well, joining me now to, uh, to talk about this historic event and the role that the United States government in every aspect is playing when it comes to our foreign policy in advancing international religious freedom is the administrator for the U.S. Agency for International Development. Uh, he spoke today, uh, actually headed off the, uh, the second uh, portion of the day with a speech, uh, and that is Administrator Mar Ambassador Mark Green. Ambassador, welcome to Washington Watch. It's great to be with you. Let, let's start out by highlighting something that Secretary Pompeo said yesterday. He was on, on the program talking. He highlighted the unalienable right that each of us has bestowed by God to, and I quote, practice one's religion and follow their conscience and to take care of their soul, end quote. I mean, th this is critical, and, and you're coming in, especially you, you, you spoke about several troubled areas in the world, but in particular, you've been going deep in Iraq, in, in that region of the world, and, and faith has been at the center of the conflict there, but it's also a part of the resolution. Yeah, that's very, very much true. So as we all know, ISIS attempted to extinguish Christianity and Yazidis and other religious and ethnic minorities from the region. Of course, they've, they've been there for thousands of years, but they've always been part of the cultural mosaic. They are part of what makes Iraq a special place. Yazidis tried to wipe them from the face of the earth. And so we think that uh, part of ultimately defeating ISIS is rolling back what they attempted to do. So we're working with community leaders we're working with faith-based leaders to do development work, to restore essential services so, so that these poor people can begin to rebuild their lives, begin to uh, restore their way of life, and, and not be forced uh, to leave. So it's a crucial part of what we do. But you said something very important. For us at USAID, around the world, 
we are far more effective when we partner with the community of faith. The community of faith, faith-based organizations, help us to reach corners that we could not reach in this world through the government. Secondly, the community of faith, faith-based organizations, take a look at those who we serve as whole people. Right. They minister to the whole person. And so in so many cases, the, the damage that's been caused through religious persecution, through the scourge of, of uh, terrible diseases, uh, we're able to do material things as a, as a government right, agency. Right. But if we partner with the community of faith, we really can help lift lives and build communities. But, but, but that's, uh, you know, I, I know there's been other administrations, but I think this administration is doing this quite well because you, you don't see the faith community as competition, but rather, as you said, a partner, because together we can do so much more than if we try to do it alone. Oh, very much so, and, and I particularly want to salute Vice President Pence. Uh, Vice President Pence has been a, a, a fearless advocate for uh, working with the faith community. The door is open. Mm -hmm. And uh, we not only welcome the community of faith, but we seek out the community of faith because, again, that's how we're much more effective. I mean, we're more effective for the American taxpayer right. when we partner with the community of faith to reach those corners that are otherwise left behind. Left well, I, I would say this, Administrator Green, you're modeling what we're wanting other countries to do when it comes to religious freedom is to allow, you are allowing these religious NGOs to, 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 to fulfill their calling, to right. serve others by partnering with them. You know, you'd mentioned about the extraordinary numbers here. So last year, the numbers, which were probably 30 percent of what they were, what they are this year, that was a large ministerial. Right, that right. was a huge gathering. And I think some of it, quite frankly, was probably curiosity to see whether or not the administration was serious. This year, we've had to turn people away. So the thousand people who are here, it could have been much larger. So I think, first off, people see the administration, the president, the vice president, is actually serious about partnering right. with the community of faith. Secondly, I think there's a recognition that re religious freedom is under attack in too many areas and that we do have to protect the religious freedom that benefits those of other faiths if we mm -hmm. expect for it to be preserved And you made ourselves. that clear in your comments today that this is about the fundamental human right of religious freedom regardless of what that faith may be or even if there's no faith. It's a fundamental human right. It to is choose. freedom of conscience. It is what brought people to these shores in the first place. That that fundamental freedom that makes every other freedom possible. It is what makes America what America is. But it, as we all know, it's much more than that. This is simply this is not simply an American value. It is a universal value, and that's why I think you see the numbers here. You're listening to Washington Watch. I'm your host, Tony Perkins, my guest in this first segment, the administrator for the U.S. Agency for International Development, Mark Green. We are at the uh, Ministerial State Department, a historic gathering of leaders from around the world. Um, I want to go back to Iraq, Iraq, where you've done a lot of work. You've been there. You've been the vice president and shown a lot of interest in the role of USAID in coming in and creating opportunity for economic development and stability, basic infrastructure, allowing people to come back in. You've got the others take care of the security issue. You take care of the stability issue. Um, how important is it? You, you were talking about ISIS and, and what they did there. From my perspective, tell me if I'm right or wrong, but this is critical for that region of the world that this work, that this rebuilding in Iraq, in Iraq is successful so that ISIS cannot come back in, uh, that they cannot claim a, uh, that they purged this region. So this, you know, we were talking before that we went on the air that Americans have a short attention span. We're not yet stable in that region. We still have some work to do. We, we definitely have work to do. You know, there's something interesting that was said to me by uh, an Iraqi leader in Baghdad. I was talking about minority communities, and he said, you know, we don't call them minority communities. And I said, what do you mean? He said, we call them component com uh, communities because we don't believe that we can be whole as a country if we do not have these components. So mm -hmm. he, he was Muslim. He said, look, if we don't have our Christian community in northern Iraq, we are not Iraq. We are not that cultural mosaic of faiths 
that we believe is a source of strength. And, and I think he's right. So we really are trying to uh, open the door to the restoration uh, of uh, the tolerant um, uh, culture that was there for so long. As, as we all know, these are, for we Christians, truly holy lands, important right. lands, fundamental right. to our religious identity. Uh, and we want people to have the freedom to be able to return to those lands. It's hard work. It's, uh, it's down in, in, in the community. But we're working with some wonderful faith leaders, community leaders, and we're working to do the hard work of restoring electricity, restoring water, so that people have some sense that they're welcome, that they can be here, that they can begin to rebuild their lives and have a future there. You know, this is, uh, I was just thinking as you were describing the things that uh, have to take place there, that are taking place there, and what USAID does really around the world. It's exhausting work. It is a costly work. Um, but, you know, that's a part of leading. And for America, if America wants to help shape, especially on this issue of religious freedom and promote this value, which, which brings with it economic growth, social stability, it, it takes work. It does take work, but I, I agree with you. I, I believe in America as a shining city on a hill. Uh, I, I believe in an America that stands for certain values and religious freedom is at the heart of that. What we need to do is to help these countries get back on their feet. Uh, we build their capacity to lead themselves. They, right. they are, they are it, sovereign, so it, independent. It, we, we want to bring them to a point where they're self-sustainable. It, it's not long term. The purpose of foreign assistance must be ending its need to exist. So we want to help them lead themselves. We'll walk with them in that journey, but it is their journey. And uh, we can be compassionate by providing those things which they cannot provide for themselves but we seek to put them in a position to lead themselves. Almost out of time, uh, Ambassador Green. Um, where, sh where else in the world should we be looking for? I mean, wh where are some of the hot spots in the world? Well, I, I, I always look to Venezuela. So in Venezuela, 10% of the population of Venezuela have now fled the country. And uh, the largest Venezuelan city outside of Venezuela is Lima, Peru. Uh, 5,000 net per day are, are leaving. And these poor people are suffering horribly. Uh, Northern Nigeria, where Christians right. are under attack. So um, th the world's on fire in a number of places. But I, I do believe I in the power of faith, and I do believe in the power of working with faith groups to lift lives, build communities, and create opportunities for a brighter future. Ambassador Mark Green, thanks so much for uh, taking time out today to, uh, to join us. Oh, I'm honored to be with you. Appreciate the, the work that you do and the perspective that you bring to USAID in partnering with the faith community, our friends like Franklin Graham at Samaritan's Purse and, and so many others that uh, have a calling. And we all have a calling to help. Some are on the front lines, some are on the back lines, but we appreciate the partnership. Thank you. All right. Well, folks, don't go away. More Washington Watch to come when we return.